Swadika. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining here us at Verso. My name is Chad Walsh, and I am the middle loop leader for grades five, six, seven, and eight. And we're absolutely delighted uh, to be connecting with you this morning. So thank you very much for joining us. As more people do join, uh, we hope to get some questions on our little sidebar, and we'll do our best to to respond to all of those questions there. A little bit about me first. I, I've been in education for about 20 years. Um, I've worked in eight different international schools, and I'm excited to be a part of this project. A question that I get asked a lot is, why Verso? Um, that's, that, that's a response that could take me some time to answer, but, but in short, it's really about um, the experiences that I've had in education is that I've been able to do that in my own classroom. Um, so Verso is an opportunity for us to really scale that up and uh, to, to provide some meaningful, intentional learning experiences that we actually really know that works with our students. This is our first Q&A session, and we'll run a series of Q&A sessions uh, such as this to share and connect with the families that are already with us and for those families that uh, are interested um, and would like to, to, to possibly partner with us in the future. Today's uh, big idea is around anything Verso. So, so this Q&A session can go off in lots of different directions. These are uncertain times, and we hope that everyone is safe, and we hope that um, everyone is staying indoors and doing the right things. This has touched everyone, um, and we see that this has really disrupted lots of different systems and industries. At Verso, we are very optimistic about this, and with this disruption, we actually are seeing this as an opportunity for us to rethink and reimagine the school experience. And we are absolutely confident in our methodology, our approach, our philosophy of what we're building and designing here is quite exciting. So again, as I said before, this is for us to share and connect, bring those, uh, keep those questions coming. And if you wish to take the conversation further, please visit our website page verso.school, uh, reach out to us, and then we can organize a private Q&A session. So hopefully this will stimulate some thinking and some more questions will fall out of the next 30 minutes. So without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to you and fire any questions our way and we'll do our best to respond. Okay, good, we have a, have a question here. It's why, why learning designers moving from transitioning from teachers to learning designers? And that's a, that's a really good question. Um, if I could actually take a, a step back from that, many schools around the world go to recruitment fairs and often over a 48 period, they do the recruitment hiring um, for new teachers to come on board. We've actually taken five months for this process to really select and identify talent and skills that are really going to uh, harness and capture the, the experiences that we want here at Verso. So that has been a very worthwhile experience for us. And we fundamentally believe that the people we are bringing on are cutting edge and uh, world renowned coming from very prestigious um, schools. And they've been having experiences in schools where they're also asking those questions. How can we do school different? How can we do and be better for our kids? And they're the types of uh, mindsets that we've brought um, on the team that are going to be starting here in August. So with that, why not teachers? Well, we're really looking for that mindset. Can, can learning designers actually come onto this journey with us and really create and design learning experience for kids that are going to have the desired impact that we're looking for? That requires us to let go of our ego and our ideas and the things that we've constantly been doing in schools. And what that means is, is that we take us out of it and we truly do put the learner in the middle. It's not just words or a platitude, it's, it's something that we actually live up to here at Verso and something that we're going to be building towards. So with that designer mindset, what that does is that really invites creative, open, dynamic thinking for us to really picture where our students are and where it is that they need to go and learning designers are all about process in setting that up and helping them achieve the goals that they set out to do. Uh, we have a question here, where are the teachers from? 
the teachers are from all around the world. Uh, we have a very, um, a, a very good balance of teachers from New Zealand and Australia, um, Canada, Hong Kong, uh, the UK and America. Um, our, our focus was not so much about the type of passport they had. It was more about the mindset that they were bringing and how they could uh, bring their skills and knowledge and expertise with them to really help us craft and build an exciting story and adventure here at Verso. Keep those questions coming. So a timely question that uh, we receive a lot is um, the nature of school, of where we are at the moment. And when, when I look at Twitter and, and all the social networks out there of, of, of teachers saying they're, they're, they're experimenting with this, there is a common theme of we can't wait to go back to school. We want to be in front of our kids again. At Verso, we're seeing this disruption as an opportunity for us to really redesign and rethink what does school actually mean? And we have to be very precise with our language. Yes, the campus is closed, but school and learning is not. That's very much open. Right now, uh, our learning designers, we have deployed a, a project team to research um, and listen to our parents, listen to what's happening out there, and really learn and empathize with ways in which we can actually really set ourselves up for success if we were to go to remote learning here in August. And that, of course, is in line with the government directives in which they uh, will set here in Thailand and we will, of course, be following that. We, are, we hope that that doesn't happen. We hope that on the 17th of August we will be open. But with absolute confidence and conviction, um, please know that we will be prepared. We will be ready. Our curriculum is strong and robust. Um, we're really promoting the, the self-directed uh, model and project-based learning, and all of that will be, will be established. For the next few months, we're actually going to be reaching out and connecting with our families. We already have been doing that, been learning about who their, who their child is, um, their skills, their talents, their passions, and really establishing that community and connection and partnership early so that uh, when August 17 happens, the, the students will have already established um, that, that relationship with us. So that's something that we're going to be working really hard on over the next few weeks and months is, is to set up that community and culture with our new families that are joining us. We have a question here, what will you do if Verso cannot open in August? So just to that point, this is, this is an opportunity that we're actually embracing and quite excited about. Um, at the moment, we're looking at a variety of, of tools and platforms and really going th through a thoughtful process of which ones are going to be the ones that really do enhance and speak to, to the Verso way of, of how we want to set up our learning. Um, the, the learning designers uh, now, we've deployed a, a, a team where we're working with Schoolbox and Course Compass, which will be our remote platform for learning. And that's a way for us to engage and connect and right now we're very mindful of the whole well-being feature of how we actually maintain social interactions, well-being, but also that academic presence to really motivate and inspire learning. So we're aware about not calling um, this online learning because that really denotes the whole notion that it is screen time. And we're, we're quite aware that we don't want to actually promote uh, that screen time. So we're going about designing a very balanced approach using our five elements and for our learning designers to be on hand at any time students need to connect and reach out. Every day will be planned around the five elements. Those five elements are community time, and community time is that opportunity to really share and connect uh, with our students and, and build that community uh, together. We have Learning Lab, that's our second element, and Learning Lab is our approach to really ensuring that learning designers are designing uh, academic rigorous um, learning experiences that really do connect and interact with our core fundamental curriculum. Um, we have adopted the, the six global theatres from Richard Hames. Richard Hames is the executive and founder of the Centre for the Future. Uh, he has established these six uh, grand challenges uh, that are overarching and they are very future focused and we're quite excited about uh, adopting this whole philosophy and approach. Uh, to speak more to the Learning Lab, 
uh, time uh, to build upon that, we also have explore time. And this is really the self-directed learning that we're offering students, the project-based learning where they get to actually choose the learning that they would like to pursue, the pathways that they would like to follow. And that is in co consultation with our learning designers. We'll be guiding um, them every step of the way and really supporting them um, as best as we can. So there, that will, there will be parameters set, there will be structures set, but there'll also be flexibility and flow to, to help them pursue the, the interests that they want. Our role there is not having the curriculum drive the learning in Learning Lab. It's really about the students handing that, that responsibility over to them and then us seeking ways to connect the community afterwards as, as, a, second, as a second connection. Um, beyond that, we also have opportunities to offer workshops throughout the day. Those workshops are going to be uh, offered to students that really do target um, specific learning needs. And those workshops could be run for um, 30 minutes. Those workshops could be run for a series of days. Um, so when we talk about personalized or individualized learning, that's what we actually mean by that. We really will listen and observe what the needs are of each student and, and, and we will support and guide them through our workshops. The other, the other element that we have is Converso, and that's our one-on-one -on -one time to really connect and engage with students, check in on them, see how we're doing. We're really proud of, of our approach and our methodology around the five elements, and we absolutely believe and have 100% confidence that these five elements will speak true to setting ourselves up for success, whether that's face-to-face -face instruction or remote learning. How many students per class is a question that has come in. Uh, we're approaching 100 students at the moment. Uh, we have a ratio of one to eight. Um, at the moment, those classes uh, do vary, but what we do see is a very healthy balance between early years, two, three, four, and five, lower loop and middle loop. So we're quite excited about the families who are asking the same questions that we are. How can we, how can we do school different? How, how can we use, use this current current situation to, to, to recognize that we don't want to just go back to school and do the things that we've always done um, after this situation. How, how can we ask those bigger questions and, and, and really provide a more connected learning experience for our students and learners? Where is Verso from is another question that's come in. This is uh, uh, quite a long story and it's, it's, it's a story that's actually um, been cooking for, for many, many, many years. Uh, our founding head of school, Cameron Fox, um, he was the, the head of school at AIS in Hong Kong for around 20 years. Um, and he was starting to think about how can, who can we engage if we were to redesign a, future, um, a school for the future? So they, they reached out to IDEO in San Francisco um, and from this design question, which Verso is the first in the world to actually ask from a design stance, is how do we design the school for the future? They went through a process of really trying to uncover, well, what does that look like? And try and envision um, what, that, what that future looks like. Um, Verso was going to actually going to come to fruition in 2008. And because of the global crisis, we, um, we decided to, to, um, to, to, to not uh, pursue that. So the timing is now, Verso is here. We're really excited about the design thinking approach and the, and the IDEO way that has definitely influenced our philosophy. And uh, here we are with Verso with this amazing, amazing physical campus behind us. But it, what we're really proud of is the, is the, the pedagogy and the, and the curriculum in which we're building from. Just looking for some other questions. Okay, we have a question around languages, Mandarin. We have got two uh, Chinese language learning designers joining us at Verso in August. We also have two Thai, and we will be supporting our learners um, through those workshops uh, with those students. The, the unique thing about Verso is that uh, it won't be a class of 24 students learning Chinese um, again, we will be able to recognize uh, the strengths and areas that students need uh, to develop in that particular language and we'll offer targeted workshops for those students. Any other languages outside of, of Chinese and, and uh, Thai, then we will 
we will seek opportunities in our community to uh, bring those people in. And again, also, also look at pathways for remote learning to happen as well for our learners. Okay, just to build on that, one of the other questions that have come through is how many hours per week? We don't wanna actually lock ourselves into uh, four hours or six hours. Uh, it, it's more on a needs basis. So we will ensure that balance and we will ensure that, that level of contact with languages, um, depending on the individual student, um, that, that uh, language learning designer will connect with those students as needs be. And this is all part of our family language plan when we meet with families and we get to identify certain language goals with them. And um, through those conversations, we'll be able to understand what those goals are and we'll be able to work with families on helping support their language learning needs. Uh, in terms of French, uh, we, we have, with the, with the learning designers coming on, we, they speak lots of different languages. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a learning designer who does, who does speak French as well. So we'll be looking at ways to, to connect them uh, with different languages. As I mentioned before, with remote learning, we really want to promote that platform and, and see how we can connect languages uh, using remote learning on our course campus platform. How is Verso different in assessing students from other schools? That's a really great question and it's one that we get asked uh, quite often. Uh, what I can absolutely say with complete confidence is that uh, if we want to do school different and if we want to do it the right way, we absolutely need to move away from tests. Uh, we absolutely need to provide better ways for us to collect data um, and, and, and information about uh, who our students are and what they need. So our approach is going to be connected to our course compass. Our approach is all about um, connecting with our students, giving them uh, in-time feedback, not waiting for six weeks after a unit concludes to give them that feedback. So our, our methodology is very responsive in that way. We have adopted the MTC, which is the Mastery Transcript Consortium. This is a globally recognized um, uh, way of us providing our transcript, which is seen more like a portfolio. So that is something that we will be uh, introducing uh, in the upper loop. And as I mentioned before, if you, if you have just tuned in, we, uh, our platform for Schoolbox and Course Compass is what we're going to be used to really track um, and give feedback to students and also parents about their progress uh, for learning in all the different um, uh, gamuts of, of, of their learning journey. Do you offer boarding? Uh, at this stage, we don't have a residential program, uh, but what I can share with you is that uh, those discussions are happening um, among other discussions, especially because of the situation we're in at the moment. Um, there, is, there is talk of us possibly um, developing a residential program here. What we have been told is once that decision is made, it would take two years for, for that to come to fruition. It is definitely a possibility for us here at Verso to really, really um, build a, a strong community so that everyone can have access uh, to the Verso way. How is Verso different to other schools? If we were just to look at the, the concept of time, uh, a lot of traditional schools at the moment, if you were to think of a percentage of time, um, it would be very fair to say and accurate to say that 70% of the time in schools is directed by teachers. Teachers determine what students learn, when they learn, how they learn, how they're assessed. And the other 30% of the time is when schools actually do hand over the learning back to students, um, whether that be through project-based uh, learning, whether that be through iTime, whether that be through after-school um, activities. Um, and what we know about that is, is that's when, that's when students really light up. That's when we, 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 we really listen to, to the, the things that they're interested in. So at Verso, what we're doing is we're going to get that relationship of time right. We're going to go with what we know works and we're going to flip that relationship. So what we're going to have is 70% of the time will be explore time. That's when we hand the learning back over to students. And that's when students will take on a series of different projects that inspire them, um, that they're interested in. And as learning designers, as coaches, as mentors, we will help them be successful on that path. 
Another question? Sport. Okay. What is the basketball team name? We don't know what the basketball team name is. Um, I've been playing around with the idea of it possibly being uh, the Verso Hornets. Um, that's, that, that, that's an idea that I've floated past the team. Um, and the response there was, let's get our students to, to make those decisions and, 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 to, and to design that. So um, in terms of sports names and so forth, we're not sure, but we're open to um, the students really driving that conversation. Is the basketball court finished? Um, at the moment, it is not finished. It's well underway. Um, every time I walk over there, uh, it, it looks different. Um, the, the space is really starting to come alive. Uh, it, it will be complete uh, when we open in August. Our sports teams. So again, we have an amazing facility here and we do really want to open um, up all the opportunities that we have here for students to, to be uh, athletic and really really promote well-being and physical literacy. Uh, at the moment, of course, we will have teams, uh, but we will need to, um, we will need to uh, respond to the students that we have and look at the interests and the sports that they're interested in, and we will design and build around that. We have engaged um, experts uh, for the Golf Academy here at Tana City. We have um, a, a, a swim team, uh, best swim team squad that will be coming on board. We have tennis also coming on board and football. Um, so they're going to be four really big sports that we've connected to and we're going to be bringing those people in to us to really help develop that program. Plus all the other sports that you can think of can happen here at Verso. Okay, we're, where are teachers from? They're all around the world. Um, they're a, a, a very good balance between uh, the UK, Hong Kong, Australia, New Zealand, America, and Canada. Uh, good question. How can Verso recruit quality teachers with passion? Uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier there that uh, we've actually taken five months to really ensure that we are seeking the right mindset, uh, the, right, the right learning designers to come on board uh, to this very exciting and bold project. Um, it hasn't been a process where it's just been a very simple interview and then it's been a yes or no afterwards. Um, we've done uh, lots of interviews where we've done them as a get to know. And then if we wanted to pursue them, then we, um, we gave them a design challenge, which they presented back to the recruitment panel. And then we went through a series of, of other, other um, interviews to, to just ensure that they, that they were the right fit for us and there was a mutual fit for us. So when, when you mentioned the word passion, Passion and drive and spirit is, is, is definitely qualities in, in, in which, we, um, which we looked out for. And I can say with absolute confidence, we are so excited for the team that are gonna be joining um, us in August. We have, um, we have 35 learning designers joining us and they will be joining the, the 10 learning designers that are already um, on the campus right now in building and designing the curriculum. So very exciting. What does a Verso graduate look like? So talking, coming back to the, the MTC, our students will receive uh, a transcript that will be globally recognized by different universities. If university is the pathway uh, for, for your child and that's the pathway which they wanna pursue. Um, in the middle loop, we've talked about the idea of actually offering internships and work experience and uh, vocational skills so that students actually get to experiment with, with different opportunities and, and engage with the workforce. Um, often in schools, we actually wait till grade 12 for that to happen or, or not at all. So we, we see Verso as a prime example for us to provide uh, those experiences so that students get to ask those questions, um, experiment so that they can determine which pathway uh, is best suited for them. Okay, so how many teachers there? We have 10 learning designers uh, on campus at the moment. Of course, we're working remotely. Um, and we have 35 learning designers coming in. And we have um, about 10 to 12 um, learning assistants uh, that will be uh, joining those teams as well. Could you please give an example uh, of the plan to enhance communication and teamwork? 
Uh, at the moment, we have a team where all the co cohort leaders are reaching out to the families that are already with us. Um, and we're, we're developing that community and culture early to really get to know who our, who our students are, developing that relationship. Um, we're also listening uh, to our families and um, he hearing them out of the experiences that they're having at the moment in their current schools. And we're using that data as a way to really help us inform how do we build the right pathway if we were to go to remote learning starting in August. How many teachers are there is another question that's come in. Uh, how, how many tennis courts? We have two tennis courts um, and they are out um, actually behind here next to the arena. You can't, you can't see them from this map, but they're out by the arena and the, and the gymnastics. Okay, do the chefs serve curry? Uh, we, we have uh, partnered with Epicure. Um, healthy eating, healthy living is something that we absolutely promote here at Verso. Um, all the students will receive um, a lunch every single day. Um, in terms of curry, I, I would like to think that, that anything is possible. We actually have some, some um, I, I guess, their, their mentor kitchen set up for kids to actually cook as well. So, so curry is an absolute, uh, would be an absolute delight to, to add to the menu and actually have kids um, or parents uh, uh, cook curries and, and what, whatever dishes appeals to them. How do you make school fun? I think that's been the best question so far. <laughs> How do we make school fun? Really, the, 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 the learning designers we, we've brought on are energetic. Um, they're, they're, they're very committed to what we're doing. Um, I, I really think that it's, it's about um, empowering our learners, hand, handing the learner uh, the learning over to them and, and then guiding and, and coaching them through that process um, because they get to choose the paths in which they like to, would like to pursue. And I think by doing that, that's really inviting them to develop trust, um, also to, to find out what works for them and what doesn't. So it allows them to make those, those critical decisions um, instead of an adult or a teacher making those decisions for them. So we're definitely more seen as a, as a coach and a mentor in their learning journey, which we believe is, is, is very powerful and meaningful for them. What tech will be used in the middle loop? Um, all of our learners will be assigned a, an iPad and it will, will have the pencil. One of the questions up there is, will it have a pencil? Yes, it will. Um, and that will be um, given to students by, by the school. The, 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 the parents uh, uh, will pay that and, and we will provide that for the, for the student. And the reason why we're, we went in that direction is so that we would establish all the apps, critical apps that we, that, um, we know students uh, will be using. So um, in terms of the system, um, that's something that we would, we would offer those students. Do you offer scholarships? That's a really good question. That's, that's one of the questions that, are, that is swirling around at the moment. I can't give a definitive uh, answer on that, but, um, but that, is, that is something that we, 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 we are considering for the future. But at this stage, we're not sure. Okay. Thank you very much for, for all those questions coming in. This is the first time we've done this, and it really was a great avenue to connect with you. So next week, uh, Thursday the 23rd of April, we will have one of our cohort learning designers who is the year, uh, in the early years. His name is Nick Gavin, and the theme will be obviously focused around early years, so that's EY2, 3, 4, and 5. So Facebook Live every Thursday at 9.30 till 10. This is something that we're going to offer over the next few weeks. We'll try our best to, to respond and answer your questions. Please do connect with us. And um, you can reach out through the, through the website, contact us. If you'd like to take the conversation further, um, we'll be more than happy to, to offer a private uh, converso with you. More details will be shared through our Facebook uh, page as well. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We, we, I've enjoyed it. I hope you have too, and I uh, hope to connect with you um, in the future. Kapunka. Kap.